And the question for this week is, how can I approach the nuances of consent with young children? And welcome back to Sitting in a Car. I'm Sarah Sproul and I sit in a car with you each week answering a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. I love this question about consent because it is about consent and consent isn't always about sex. We can talk about consent with really young children. So if you're interested in helping your child treat other people's and other people's children with respect, then this is the question for you. I remember I had a son, maybe he was 10, 11, and there was this sort of rage going through that whole age group at that time. It was a game of like, let's just see what sort of disgusting food concoction we can eat. And so there'd be things like they'd make concoctions of mayonnaise, jam, anchovies, or they might do, let me look at my, oh yeah, cashews, vinegar, and strawberries. And it would be like a dare game to see who could eat the most disgusting thing. There'd be like a group of maybe five kids out in the garden trying to do all this stuff. And I remember sort of feeling a bit like, oh, not useful, not good. And I'd go out and say, um, no one should be forced to eat anything they don't want to eat. Or I might say, everyone gets to choose what they eat. No one else should force them to do something. And my child would go, yes, mum, but that's the game. It's the game. So at the time, it didn't really feel like I was making a huge impact. But as long as there was a voice in there saying, nobody has to do something they don't want to do. Everyone gets to choose what they want. There was at least a second option, right? Even if those 11 and 12 year olds didn't feel like they can choose it at the time. So talking about consent with young children, point one, play dates are a great way to find teachable moments when it comes to respecting what someone else wants to do and respecting what we want to do. So I remember times where I'd be in the kitchen trying to make dinner and I could hear two children playing in uh, the play area just near me and one child would be saying something, let's play puzzles, and the other person would be saying, I don't really like puzzles and the other kid would be saying yeah but we have to play puzzles it's my house <laughs> so oh great opportunity to talk to, about consent so come over and say you know what um, everyone needs to be happy with the um, activity that or the game that's being played so let's see if we can work out what's something that everyone wants to play right so I'm not saying that's wrong or you have to play or whatever it is I'm just saying that everyone gets to be happy and content with the thing that's being done, right? So you can see how that's nothing to do with sex. That's only about games. And it's perfect because the dynamic of people negotiating and working out what two people want to do is widely applicable to all areas of life, not just play, not just sex, not just which restaurant do you want to go to on a date, not just which movie do you want to see, not just... Um, whether you go to bed at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. There are wide ranging applications for learning how to negotiate with someone else about something they would like to do that we would like to do too. Point two, another way to teach consent with young children is to talk about body language because not all people can show uh, what they want just with their words. Uh, and pets is a really good way to talk to young children about body language. So if you have a dog or a cat, um, you can observe that the dog or the cat might be resting in a very relaxed way on the couch and point it out to our child. Look how relaxed cat or dog is. Um, they look really happy. And then you might notice that a toddler is going over to the cat and the cat runs away. And you could say to your child, look at that our cat ran away. What does that show us about how our cat was feeling? And our child might be able to say, oh, that they didn't want to be there. They're going, yeah, right. So they showed us without their body that they didn't want to be around us anymore. Isn't that amazing? Animals and humans can show us things with their body. So we're introducing this idea of body language. Um, you could do it. I noticed with our dog, when he is sitting on the couch, he is like, um, the most timid and shy animal on the planet and he's gorgeous and we love him but he's timid and shy and one thing he'll do is if you come up to him and you give him a hug he'll do this with his eyes 
right? I think, or maybe it's down. I can never remember. But they're in dog body language. It's called the D eyes. Their eyes make the shape of a D. So we can teach that to our child too. Look at our dog. He is teaching us that he's not happy just by the shape of his eyes. Um, how could we work out how a human isn't happy too by maybe the look on their face? And you can talk about it. And all this stuff is about consent. Point number three. Talking about consent is not just about avoiding hurt. It's also about giving people a chance to make decisions for themselves. Um, some decisions take more time than other decisions. So, for example, if you have got a few children and they're trying to work out uh, what they want to do, um, have a look at the body language in the group. There may be someone who's not saying anything. So if we're trying to work out, okay, what game are we going to play? And someone's shouting rounders and someone's saying trampoline and someone's saying um, cards and someone isn't saying anything. Then as the adult, you could say, everybody needs different amount of times to make a decision. So let's just be quiet for a minute to make sure everyone's had a turn to think about what they might like. We could do this too in our, with our kids if we're offering them um, choices to do with snacks. Uh, would you like raspberries or would you like an apple? And if they're not sure, then we don't have to push them. We can say, I can see you're not sure. I'll hang on, hang on while you, you can make up your mind, right? And that shows respect because we're, remember, we're about raising respectful young people who know how to respect themselves. So that could look like knowing how much time they need to make a decision. Um, and respecting others looks like giving other people time to make their decision. Uh, I know for myself, um, if I'm not used to having a choice, which is sort of maybe how some of us are, maybe I don't have a choice often about what we watch on TV because I'm just in the habit of just deferring to maybe the children. It takes me a while to really go through Netflix and see, well, what is a movie that I'd really like to watch? And it can take me two or three minutes, but I get there in the end and I find something I want to do. So this idea of giving people time to make a choice, and we do this with young children too, is a great way to model um, this idea of consent and how sometimes working out what we want to do can take time. So to answer the question, how can I approach the nuances of consent with young people? There, let's sum up the three points that we made. I'm going to look at my book to make sure I don't forget them. The first one is, the first one is playdates give you great practical opportunities to talk about the fact that everyone needs to be happy with the thing that's happening right then. Point two, pets give us a great way to start talking about body language with our children and we can then also start talking about body language in human beings as well. And point three, Choices can sometimes take time and one of the ways to show consent with someone is to give them time to make their choice. Just like we need to sometimes give ourselves time to make a choice. And that's sitting in a car for another week where I've answered a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. And while I've got you here, can I ask for your help? Would you like repost or subscribe to sitting in a car? When you do that, other parents just like you are able to find the information and support they need to do this part of their parenting even better. Thanks for that and bye for now. This is what happens when you forget to bring a cloth to wipe off your whiteboard. You use a pad. Not the best, but actually better than I thought it would go. <laughs> so I'm actually trying to fit all of this and this and this in one screen. Let's see how we go. Just for the record, a pad actually doesn't work well as a whiteboard eraser. Oh, no, that's wrong. Start again, start again. Sometimes it takes me a while to work out what to say. <laughs> that's the way it is. Or I might say, I feel very uncomfortable with this. It looks like some people might be doing things that they don't want to do. Or I might say, um, no one, or no, I'd... Oops. <laughs>